Okay, so this is a video with Napolitano and Salente. And I want you to pay attention to what, Sol what Napolitano says at the very end of the video. And then I'm going to tell you why I think it's important. Ron Paul and Thomas Massey, and yeah. that's not going to happen overnight. No, no. no, 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 no not, not with the crime syndicate in charge, it's not going to happen. You know, but again, you have the solution. And you said it a couple of weeks ago. Taxation without representation. Why are we paying these federal income tax? If we don't pay these federal income tax, then we don't have to have these clowns telling us what to do, how to do it, and watching everything that we do. Well, if a state seceded from the union, and we and people of like mind went to and lived in that state, I would think it would be a very popular place to go to. There would be no federal income tax. There would, be, there would be no federal government. Now, maybe the state would enter into some kind of an agreement with the feds to protect us if we were invaded, but why would anybody invade us? Okay, so he says maybe the states would enter into an agreement for protection in case we were invaded, but why would anyone invade us? And this is what I'm trying to explain to people, that the founders originally did when they wrote the Constitution. This was simply and only an agreement between the states for creating a military to defend us in case we're ever invaded. And it was no more than that. That was it. And Napolitano is basically saying that's what we should do. And what I'm saying is that's what was done before. The problem was is that there's been coup after coup after coup after coup that's occurred that has expanded the size of government over and over and over again until now we have this system where we have corporations um, entering into private contracts with private citizens and then funneling the money to the federal government because the federal government had no right to federally tax people off federal lands. I had went over this in an old book that I found that was for military officers where it explained everything that's in the Constitution, including taxes, including imposts, including excise, including the creation of instrumentalities. That these were all things done that military officers were due, and the officers were selected by the states, not the federal government. And the federal government was in charge of keeping, I'm sorry, the states were in charge of keeping the federal government in line and holding their hand to the fire when it came to obeying the Constitution. However, when Lincoln came into power, he took, he created this war, called it uh, freeing the slaves, and then took over the states by threat and force. The things they did to Atlanta, Georgia was, was, was horrible. The things they did to the Indians was horrible. Uh, Lincoln and his military, he attacked civilians. You never attacked civilians. No military ever is supposed to attack civilians. We people not on military posts are civilians. They're there to protect us only. And this is well known for people in the military. Uh, at least I, I knew it very well. I, I was not um, ignorant of the facts. And even then, I was told what the Constitution was shortly after I joined and what my job was. My job was to protect the civilians. And this is what I'm telling you. That is what the Constitution does. That's its only purpose. So let's hear really quick again what he says. That state, I would think it would be a very popular place to go to. There would be no federal income tax. There would be, there would be no federal government. Now, maybe the state would enter into some kind of an agreement with the feds to protect us if we were invaded, but why would anybody invade us? Okay, so the states did enter in an, into an agreement with a federal system, and those federal system was created with representatives sent to the federal government, the, the seat of government called Washington, D.C. And they would talk about ways to keep us safe. And they only went there if there was um, a necessary uh, purpose, such as security. 
keeping us uh, for war efforts. And once a year, they had to meet once a year, according to the Constitution. They only had to go to the seat of government once a year. That was it. They didn't need to go there every day and create law after law after law and run these instrumentalities constantly. Okay, so if you just look at the preamble of the Constitution, you see it right there. And this is OLRC. This is, uh, they have a Constitution in here. And for some reason, it doesn't come all the way up usually. Uh, yeah, it's up this time. Usually I only get the first page. We the people are the representatives sent to the seat of government from the states of the United States are the federal lands. Okay, so the representatives were sent to the seat of government in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. So these are their goals. And they ordain and establish this constitution. For who? The states, the independent, the free sovereign and independent states. This is a state of people who are bound, who are dependent, and they're dependent on the independent states. They work for the independent states. So the Constitution is a document that is supposed to secure the rights of the independent states. You see, it says for the representatives do these things for the free, sovereign, and independent states. The representatives at the seat of government and on the federal lands work for, to do these things, these are its goals, blessings of liberty, ourselves, our posterity, do them for the United States of America. And how are they going to do them? This way. Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4, Article 5. This is how they do them. If you go to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, it says where they do them. Such district, called the seat of government, and places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state to erect military installations. And that the state, the uh, legislator of the state, had to cede jurisdiction to the federal government over only those places purchased. So the states gave some lands or sold some lands to the federal government and ceded like authority, jurisdiction, power and authority over those places to the federal government. So, if the states were to join the Union, they would have a place where they would gather to exercise power over a wartime effort. And you see in Article 2, the President, this is the President, he's the executive of the United States of America. The only private people he's in charge of are the militia when called into actual service. And the land and naval forces of the, uh, the, you see, the president shall be commander in chief of the army and navy of the, It says United States. It's just this. This Constitution is not a very good document to. It's a good document to use, but the, but this, um, the way and they the the way that they do this program here, it's not very good. United States. So it's the Army and Navy of the United States, not United States of America. They're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. One works for the other. The United States. Land and Naval Forces under the President's control works for the United States of America to protect us, to secure our liberties. The Bill of Rights is not for me. 
It's for the people on the federal lands who agree to go work for the federal government. They give up almost all their rights, but they have 10. And everything not listed there is left to the people in the states. Because the people in the states can secure the blessings of liberty. The um, human rights. Okay, so Napolitano is saying it. He's, he says it. Suppose the states left the current union, seceded from the union, people of like-minded went there, and then they rejoined just for safety and security in case of an invasion. And I'm telling you, that's what the Constitution did. And the, the government, the feds, year after year, 100 year after 100 year, coup after coup after coup, expanded it. They used the contract clause in the Constitution, which was to hire people off federal lands to come onto federal lands to do some work like build the buildings, put in the water systems, put in the sewage systems. They were supposed to do all those things. And when they were done, they were supposed to leave. And those were the instrumentalities that were supposed to come and help aid the government in erecting its forts on the federal lands that was ceded to it by the independent states. Okay, and then they weren't supposed to be used to contract with private people off federal lands to force them into a system of quote unquote voluntary taxation to the federal government. And if you look here in Title V, you see under Title V, which is a positive law, which means it's a law and it has a positive law citation or a law citation that the courts can then use and they know it's a law because it has a positive law citation. These are the people who are the federal taxpayers, the ones who work on the federal lands. Title 26 is not a positive law. There's no positive law citation. When the courts see it, they don't see a positive law. They simply see some bullshit written on a piece of paper which tells them that it's a private contract because it's not cited the way a law is cited. And I did a video on that just the other day. And you can go watch that if you want to know more. Laws are cited as 5 U.S.C. section and then whatever the section is. Not law is cited as Internal Revenue Code section blah blah blah. That's not a law. That's not a way the law is cited. And the Constitution is a document to which the states agreed to by contract. The federal, the federal Constitution is a contract to which the states agreed to to have the federal government to give up some lands in their state for building forts in order to contribute to the safety and security of the entire country. And that's the only job the federal government is supposed to have. That's the only thing they're supposed to do. That's it. Nothing more. That's it. But people have been so brainwashed and so indoctrinated and so hypnotized or whatever you want to call it to believe it means that the federal government can do this, that, and the other. And what we all owe a federal tax because we all have to do our part. The federal government is not our government. It's an organization for war efforts. It's an agency that works for the states in the event of a war to organize the war. That's why the president is the commander in chief because he has to be able to organize the war. And the representatives and the senators are supposed to have prior military service seven or nine years so that they can go to Congress when needed or once a year and organize war effort in case of an invasion. They have to, they have, to have military background to know how to run a military. Now, I'm not saying that if we switched it all up at this point and put only military in charge that it would be any better because we're still at a place where the federal government has expanded its power and authority and its and what people perceive it to be to be so far outside of what the constitution was that we probably would need 
either a new constitution or people really need to to start putting the the representatives hands to the fire and i know they call this the military industrial complex but the military did not create the military industrial com the industrial complex the congress and the president did all these contracts and all these departments are under the executive and the Congress passes laws to put them there. They charter them into that. They charter them into existence and they allow them to do these things and they allow them to, to do them as private corporations and then slowly over time they've allowed them, like for example the um, Federal Reserve Bank has private accounts where they move money around and, and, and nobody knows where the money came from, where it's going, how they got it, by what means or anything. So this is what I've been trying to explain for at least the last year. Napolitano said it, he said it very well. Suppose the states left the union and rejoined, but only in the event of an invasion for war purposes. And my point is, is that's what the founders originally intended. But he also says, if you think that the people there now are going to do it. You're mistaken because they're not going to. All right. So go check out this video. Um, they say a lot of, you know, blah, 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 blah stuff that I just, I don't agree with and didn't really listen to. They do a lot of chit chat, but there are some little things in here that they say that I agree with. So, um, if you're interested, go watch his video. Like, share, and subscribe to my videos, and check out this website, uscode.house.gov. Read the Constitution here. Um, look at some of the laws, the positive laws, and look at the positive law citation, Title I, Chapter 3, Section 204A. It tells you what the positive law citation is, what it looks like, how it becomes a law, that the courts can use it once it has a citation to be a law and then positive law citations are in front matter where it says positive law semicolon citation and then what it's supposed to look like. Okay, that's the citation for a law. The IRS does not cite it this way. Okay, so lots of information in this video. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.